ready for adventure? Well, we're in the Lake District and there's plenty to be had. Cumbria is a fantastic place for cycling and it's home to a unique event. The Fred Whitten Challenge draws riders from across the world for a test of fitness and stamina over the highest passes in the Lake District. Fred Whitten's Challenge it was started 11 years ago because one of our club members, Fred Whitten, who was the biggest organiser that we knew, organised races all throughout the year and uh, was uh, instrumental in bringing new young riders into the sport, died of cancer. Fortunately, it was just short of his 50th birthday, so we set up a ride in his memory. The first ride was basically just a club ride uh, with about 80 riders and from there it's just snowballed into this international event. Well obviously they've come from all over England, Scotland, Wales, Ireland but we have riders here today from Switzerland, France, Belgium, one or two from Bahrain, uh, obviously they're the English type, Canada, we have riders from Canada. Uh, it's, it's growing on the international scene, overseas riders have guaranteed a ride but the English riders or the British riders have got to go into a ballot to get a ride. It's that popular. And uh, this is Whitten, Fred Whitten's widow. She chooses the entries out of all the ones that come in. We just put them in a big pile and she picks the first thousand out. We also look after the people that uh, the people that marshal for us, the people that help, the sponsors. They all, there's 1,250 riders here today. Obviously you'd have to understand what you're up against. It's, uh, it's, it's probably the hardest one day ride that you do in the country in the day. You get a lot of miles in really. But the main one is that Hard Knock Pass, which is the steepest pass in England, comes at exactly 100 miles. It's a circular route that includes all the climbs, but also views of most of the lakes. Uh, people that's never been to the Lake District before are astounded when they come in. We go through a start area which starts, obviously starts this little electronic chip off which they have on the wrist. They then put it in at various checkpoints on the course. When they come into the finish, they download their time, get a little certificate and a bigger certificate of all the details of it presented to them at the finish. The fastest ride around today will be under six hours, but the slowest will be something like 12, 13 hours. That's the difference in the standard of riders that's on it. Last year, the first people round, or the fastest, did it an average of 21 miles an hour, which is fantastic when you think of the terrain that they've covered on that. No buses, no taxis, no lifts, no, nowhere to cheat. It's bikes or shanks is poorly, as they say, and get yourself back here. Yeah, everything seems to be running nice and smoothly. Everybody's going away, sun's shining. What else could we want?
I do a lot of sports, and I think compared to most others, this is this is probably the most magical one. This is the one that's uh, the one that everybody wants to do. You can see that by the fact that it's difficult to get an entry, but I think the fact that it's the organisation is absolutely fantastic. Everybody's very very friendly, and it goes through some fantastic scenery. But mainly, it's a really hard event. Anybody that anybody that finishes it, no matter whether it's six hours or ten hours, deserves a medal because it's a very very tough event. It takes a lot of training to do. Well, I had a bit of a bonk at about 50 miles and I thought I'm not even going to get home here, so I just started shoveling food down and I've never had so much on a bike ride in my life. <laughs> well, I think it's amazing. I actually want to do it next year, just for seeing these guys doing it this year. I think it's amazing. Write my name down, yeah, Nico, yeah, from Spain, yeah, I'll be here. Uh, it's, it's my big event of the year, really. This is it. We holiday in the Lake District, so this is kind of roads I know, so no, it's actually... It's a lot of miles. I tried to drive it today and I was having enough problems with my car gears. I can't imagine what they're going through. They've done a brilliant job. Reach Beyond Adventure is an adventure activity company based in the Northern Lake District near Oldswater. We do a range of activities from climbing, canoeing, uh, abseiling, gill scrambling and bushcraft survival activities as well. So today we have a group of eight children, a mixture of ages who've just come along to, to experience some of the outdoor activities. Uh, they range from children who've done this before to complete beginners and, and our aim is for them to have a, a chance to go out and try these activities and, and really get out there in the outdoors. For the children that haven't done this before, for them it's a, it's a real eye-opener. It, the, the responses we get from them are fantastic, real wow factor. Uh, the sort of comments we get is, this is the best thing I've done all summer, this is the best experience I've had, uh, I've never tried this, uh, this before, it's just fantastic. So they're, they're, they're always positive responses and, uh, and always just an eye-opener for children who, who are new to the area. Adult groups like to go, generally like to do something a bit more adventurous, so they might go for perhaps some climbing, some ridge scrambling, uh, just to, to possibly some canoeing or even the sea kayaking where they can go and push themselves a little bit more, just that little bit more of an adventure. I come from Cornwall originally, um, and as you can imagine it's a, it's a perfect outdoor background as well with all the water and the cliffs uh, and that gave me that real fascination for the outdoor lifestyle and, and from there I've continued following my, my route north, uh, mostly following the mountain area, so spending time in Snowdonia and then finishing here in, uh, in the Lake District where it's perfect, we've got everything that, that you could want for outdoor adventure, the lakes and the mountains. It's got everything you'd want from an adventure playground. In fact, compared to most of the places in the UK, for me this is it, this is where I want to be. So much diversity and, and I've travelled all over, I've been, I've been to places in Europe and, and the Lake District equals, if not at times, betters those places. There are some activities which lend themselves better uh, across all the year and canoeing is a good example of that because you can be out in almost any weather conditions and it's still perfect for that. 
So we're going to go canoeing and some of the things that we need before we go canoeing, first of all, safety is the most important thing, right? So we need a, a buoyancy aid to keep you afloat if you do, do go swimming and saying hello to the fish. And we also need a paddle. We need the right size kit for you so that you've got something that, that's, that does fit. Ideally, the paddle needs to be somewhere between chest height and nose height. Yeah, if they're really up here, and it might be a bit tricky, but it's still possible. But if they're down here, that's a problem. They're too small. Canoeing, going in the open canoes is, is perfect, whether you're experienced or, or you're a novice. And after a, a, a few, few minutes of tuition, a bit of coaching, then you're skilled up and ready to go and, go and explore. Holding on to the paddle then, one hand on the top, make an L shape. Yeah. Hook that over the top of your thumb, and then your fingers go over the top and rest on top. Now, a lot of people find this different, and so they tend to want to hold the paddle like that. It's not very good. You'll get tired very quickly. So the best way to do it is to be really, really super efficient, super fast with your paddling. Put your hand on top, yeah? The other hand goes down here. This is going to do all the power work, and this is going to be like a lever. Do you see what I'm doing with my hands here? My hand's staying fixed, and I'm using my top arm to power through. Groups. Let's get these floating. Uh, they're, they're very stable. They're perfect for going out and exploring on the lake. Uh, you can go with no experience at all and get, you'll be on the water in minutes paddling and journeying. Well, when people come to the Lake District, uh, they want to do a little bit more than just walking and exploring the, the touristy areas. They want to get out there in the outdoors and experience something that's a little bit different. And the sort of services that people get from, from organisations like ourselves brings more and more people to, to the area each year. And that's really putting us on the map, the Lake District on the map, for a, an adventure destination.